Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord on our last night of revival. Can we give God praise? Can we give God glory? Even now, let's clap our hands. Let's lift our hands. Let's lift our voice and magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If it had not been for God who was on our side, where would we be? And you know what? We are alive. We are here. We're here to give God praise and here to give God glory. For his name is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We give your name praise on tonight. We give you glory tonight, magnify you. We glorify you. We lift you up now, God. You get all the praise and you get all the glory. We know there's no one like you. There's no name above your names. For you said in your word, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that you are Lord. You are our Lord. You have risen from the dead. You are Lord. Every knee shall bow and tongue shall confess that you are our Savior. So now we ask that you be with us even now. We ask that you even cover us with your blood, the blood that you shed over 2,000 years ago. God, we thank you for what you've done for us, and we thank you for what you're doing for us now and what you have for us in our future. God, we give you glory. We give you honor, for we love you on today. Bless the word that shall come forth. Bless those who are viewing. Bless those who are listening. Bless those who are going to receive you today, for you are going to give the glory. There shall be glory after this, and we give you praise and adoration on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap those hands, and let's give God the praise. Come on, everybody clap those. Oh, this is the last night of revival. So we're going to have a little bit of church. Come on, clap those hands. Yeah, yeah. Come on, help me sing these songs. Say he's still alive. God's not dead.
Give it up, give it up, give it up. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he is Lord and he's worthy. Yeah, yeah, he's worthy. From Landover to Dallas, he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 We're getting ready to come around our virtual altar as we come and, and to this evening worship experience, our, our last weekend of revival. It, it has been a powerful month and it continues tonight. And it's getting ready to get set off. All right, it's going to be set off and shut down. And so we thank God that, we, that we're that here on this Saturday night. And I'm enjoying worship even more tonight, Dr. Warner, uh, because we don't have to worry about snow tonight. Amen. Tonight, tonight we don't have to worry about snow. I mean, it's a whole other deal tomorrow, but tonight we don't have to worry about it. So we're going to ask now as we, as we come around this virtual altar uh, that... The Reverend Renee Austin, who is also a student of Dr. Haynes, and she's going to come and lead us in prayer. Amen. She 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 been wait, Freddie. She been waiting all month to pray. Amen. She been waiting all month to make sure you know that she can pray, and so she's going to lead us in prayer. And Amen. We're coming around that virtual altar, all to the glory of God. Amen. Reverend Austin. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Good evening, everyone. As Pastor said, our virtual altar is open. We gather before our Lord tonight, wherever you are, in your homes, in Dallas, in the DMV. We have people joining us globally for worship. We thank God. It's prayer time. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Mm. Most holy and all wise, our heavenly Father. Lord, we're just so grateful to be able to come before your throne tonight, mm -hmm. God. Master, we bless your name because you're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you because all the honor and praise is due you, Lord God. Mm. We just thank you. Thank we you, thank Jesus. you for everything, Lord God. You've been so good to us as a people. Mm. Mm. And for that, we bless you. Mm may not have started out that well but you bringing us in real good lord god thank you, jesus. and so we thank you mm. lord god in the name of jesus we have joined together tonight two branches of zion mm. one on the east coast and one in the south but we still are serving the same god mm. lord god we thank you for our pastor tonight reverend dr henry p davis the third Master, we ask that you continue to bless and keep him. Mm. Touch his mind, Lord God. Keep his heart. Lord God, touch his body and keep him strong. We thank him for every, we thank you for every word that you deliver through him to us, Lord God. Jesus. We ask that you continue to watch over his wife and family, Lord. Mm. Keep his home, Lord God, a place of peace. Keeping power. A place of study, Lord God. Yes a place of worship we thank you for him and his leadership god we thank you for the first baptist church of highland park lord where we are bible believing christ-centered and spirit-led god where we do missions where we lift up the name of jesus we thank you for all who serve today 
to help serve our community. We ask a blessing upon everyone who served today and those who received boxes of food. Over 1,400 boxes were distributed, Lord. Mm -hmm. Even in the cold, we worked. Mm -hmm. But it's all to your glory, Lord. We thank, thank you. you. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we have here a prayer vessel, Lord God. We ask you to remember those prayer requests that have been placed there. Whatever the need might be, if it's healing, Lord God, or provisions, or a job, health, whatever it is, God, mm. we just ask that you meet those needs tonight, Lord mm. God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we're grateful for our uh, band and for uh, Brother Nathan leading us in worship. Yes. We're thankful, God, for mm. our mm. media team from both churches mm. where we can do a simulcast, Lord God. We thank you. Mm. We thank you for the Friendship West Church and we thank you for their leader, Dr. Freddie Haynes. Mm. We thank you for the platform you've given him, Lord. He speaks as a prophet, Lord God, and he is not afraid to speak truth to power. We bless you for what you have poured into him mm -hmm. and he pours out to all of us, Lord God. We thank you for him. We thank you for the word you've given him on tonight. Jesus. For our last night of revival, God, we have been waiting with anticipation and we look forward to seeing and hearing from him live from the city on the hill. Thank mm. you, God. Mm. Lord, we ask you to keep his wife Keep his daughter, Lord God, and his family. We ask a blessing upon the people of Friendship West Church all the way in Dallas, Texas, God. Join us together tonight as one in the spirit, Lord God. Come on and rain down on both churches tonight mm. as we worship and praise you tonight, Lord God. As always, we lift before you bereaved families, Lord, and those who are suffering from COVID. We thank you for the vaccine, God. Thank you for new leadership for this country, Master. Thank you, We Jesus. just bless your name for all that you do. Mm. We praise you for your son, Jesus, who has died for our sins, God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, mm. and if there's mm. someone in D.C., in Maryland, Virginia, in Dallas, surrounding area, someone who does not know you, God. Mm. We ask tonight after the preach word, mm -hmm. something may be said or done that makes them cry out, what must I do to be saved? Yes, Lord. Lord God, let them connect with our church or mm. connect with Friendship West, God, mm. so that they may be part of your kingdom, God. Father, it's in the name, Lord Jesus. We pray and ask all of these things, and we praise you right now, God, in advance, because we know you're going to do it. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's clap those hands together. Thank you so very much, Reverend Austin. We're going to our seats, those of us in the building. We're getting ready to share in our offering. It's offering time. And even if you're in Dallas and you want to give to the Friendship West Church, you can certainly feel free to do that. Uh, of course, you have your methods and some of our methods are similar. Uh, we share even now through our time of giving, uh, through Givelify, through our website, through Cash App, through Text to Give. And we thank God for every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. Reverend Austin just mentioned that, uh, that every weekend we are engaged in missions. We are engaged in touching the lives of people. And more than so many persons came on our campus today and we were able to bless them. Let me thank all of the volunteers for your dedication. Um, we, we, we had uh, the Reverend, new Reverend uh, Joanne Borges Palmer brought brought some heat lamps. Boy, we needed everything today. Amen. She, she had about six or seven heat lamps uh, out there, and uh, we moved, and we got it done, and so we are grateful for the greatness of God. And so let's get ready to give. If you might lift up your giving apparatus, I want to pray over it, pray over you. Encourage those of us who are giving to remember our preacher tonight, the Reverend Dr. Haynes. He is good. He is getting ready to bless us in a full throttle and full throated way as he always does. And so we ask now, dear God, bless now the gifts that we share all to the glory of God. Thank God for the tithe, the tenth off the top. We thank God for the commitment they're shown on a regular basis. I saw John Askew walk up to the church today. Others dropping off their gifts. Bless our gifts now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go. Let's give all to the glory of God. You can feel the presence of the Lord even now. Come on, help me sing it, 
Come on. Hey, the presence of the Lord is here. Do you believe it? The presence of the Lord is here. What can you? You feel it in the atmosphere. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord. What is it? Come on, clap those hands. Come on, we're going to give God glory on tonight. So we go higher.
will receive what the Lord has for you. No matter how 21 started off, I shall have what I need. So the Lord shall supply all my needs. If you believe it, you ought to lift those hands and say it again. for your gifts, thank you for your generosity, and thank God for the spirit of this worship experience. My God, you can feel something going on yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. celebrating an anniversary today or this week and you're here in the sanctuary, you can stand up. We want to salute you if you're celebrating an anniversary today or this week, and if you are celebrating a birthday today or this week we want to salute and oh go ahead Lydia we got you we got you covered happy birthday happy birthday uh, Miss Lydia Williams is in worship and we salute those who are sharing with us online uh, today Charles Thompson Holly Porter Trent Payne amen that's my man Mr. Crossover he and all of them are celebrating uh, birthdays today and tomorrow. Alma, Alma Gray Britt, Virginia Bird, Carol Davis Green, Deacon Naomi Powell, Rosa Jenkins, all of them, as well as Shante Wright James. And this week, we got we have Philip Brooks, Francine Washington, Elvis Scrap. Butler, Yvette Gilliard, Judy Street Jones, Julian Blackman, Shante McIntyre, uh, Zariah Coley, Sterling Brown, Deacon Janice Raynor, Corrine Thomas, Alicia Hardy, Monica Yvette Mann, Faye Nelson, Kalisa Proctor, Alicia Doctor, Alicia Clark, uh, Manning Moore, Samaya Swain, Malaysia Milton, Audrey Baysmore, Liz Rodriguez, Nico Williams, Bobby Clark, Iona Williams, Helen Marshall, Juno McFarlane, Rose Rosalind Pugh. Oh, that's our turning. She keeps things straight around here. Vincent Cantrell, Lydia Williams, all right. Damari Evans, Sanaya Evans, Billy. Uh, Richardson, Anna Allen, Patricia Belton, Charles Richardson, Shannon Scrivener, and LaShawn Pearson, along with Lakia Gales. Give all of them a great big hand. Amen. As, because as excited as we are about the first birth, even more excited you should be about the second birth. We're going to get our exercise on 
uh, after the, at the end of this service. So we got our face strong gear on. We are comfortable. And so we're going to allow you to get some exercise, especially those of you in the DMV who might have to do some shoveling tomorrow. Amen. So we're going to help you tonight. We're going to help you tonight so you'll be ready for tomorrow. But hey, everybody, it's preaching time. Amen. And then we are all, oh, we're getting ready. We're getting ready. We're ready for Freddie tonight. Amen. And so we're thanking God for the senior pastor, the tribal chieftain of the Friendship West Baptist Church. Year after year, he has come and blessed us. This year, it's COVID, it's Corona, it's all different, but that's all right. Dr. Haynes is still going to be Dr. Haynes. And see, and, and I, I believe, I believe we're really getting the best of Dr. Haynes tonight. Uh, we, why, why, why do we get the best? Because, you know, right through now, you know, typical weekend back in the day, Dr. Haynes would have multiple services tomorrow. And matter of fact, he at one time used to have three and four services on Sunday. So all he's doing now is one service. And so I'm thanking God. And, he, and he's not having to get on planes and zigging and zagging. I still know he's doing stuff. But I know he's getting ready to bless us with a mighty word. Leaves one of the finest churches in our country. I want you to stretch your hands all the way to Dallas, Texas. And repeat these words. God bless. God bless. God bless. Dr. Dr. Haynes, is getting, look at him. He's getting ready. You know he's getting ready to throw down in Jesus' name. After we minister through song, next voice you'll hear all the way from the big D. Dr. Freddie Douglas Haynes the third. If you know you get some in this year, you're expecting great things. The song simply says this. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Expecting great things, oh great things. If you believe that, you ought to help me say that chorus and say, hey, I'm expecting great things. Are you expecting something for God to do? If you know He's gonna do it for you, you ought to type it in the chat. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things, oh great things. Well, you're expecting great things in my life. You do great things. How about here? In my home, you do great things. The Bible says this, oh, I haven't seen, and I choose to believe great things. Oh, oh, oh help me say I'm, I'm expecting great things. Oh, I'm, in this year, I'm expecting, I'm expecting great things. Come on, you are definitely without God. So all we can say is I'm expecting. It's not going to be from us, but it's by the grace of God. Oh, I'm expecting great things. And I, I'm expecting great things. Oh, great things. Where you're expecting it to happen in my life.
choose to believe. I choose to believe. And I eyes haven't seen. And I choose. Yeah, yeah, great things. If you believe that He's gonna do it for you, come on, say. Listen, I'm Peacock Proud and Honeymoon Happy to connect once again to first with First Baptist Highland Park, pastored uh, by my warm friend and brother, uh, the gift to the body of Christ, uh, the preacher, teacher, visionary, pastor extraordinaire, Pastor Hank Davis. God bless you. Thank you so much for this high honor and prized privilege to share with you. Again, I was uh, admittedly uh, very disappointed that COVID got in the way of what I look forward to every year. One of the high moments on my calendar uh, is the precious privilege of sharing with you uh, the amazing people at First Baptist Highland Park. And so I'm just grateful to your pastor uh, for not firing me, uh, but keeping me on uh, the ticket uh, in this month of January as we anticipate great things. Uh, from our great God. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor Davis. I continue to lift you up in prayer as well as the wonderful family of God there at First Baptist Highland Park. I want to call your attention to a passage of scripture found in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 27. There in the 27th chapter, beginning at the 39th verse, we find the words of our text for this message. Acts chapter 27, beginning at verse 39. I'm going to read in your hearing from the Good News translation of the Greek New Testament. It reads, when day came, the sailors did not recognize the coast, but they noticed a bay with a beach and decided that if possible, they would run the ship aground there. So they cut off the anchors and let them sink in the sea. And at the same time, they untied the ropes that held the steering oars. Then they raised the sail at the front of the ship so that the wind would blow the ship forward. And we headed for shore. But the ship hit a sandbank and went aground 
the front part of the ship got stuck and could not move while the back, back part was being broken to pieces by the violence of the waves. The soldiers made a plan to kill all the prisoners in order to keep them from swimming ashore and escaping. But the army officer wanted to save Paul, so he stopped them from doing this. Instead, he ordered everyone who could swim to jump overboard first and swim ashore. The rest were to follow, holding on to the planks or to some broken pieces of the ship. And this was how we all got safely ashore. In these few moments with your prayers, I'd like to use as a subject from which to preach, come hell or high water, come hell or high water. You recognize come hell or high water as an illustrative idiom that paints a picture of one with resolve in spite of resistance, repression, even racism. Come hell or high water is a picturesque phrase that lets us know that one is determined in spite of difficulties, dangers, and disappointment. Come hell or high water is that wonderful picture that lets us know that there is in us, within us, and a capacity in spite of catastrophe. Within us, there is an ability to advance in spite of attacks and aspirations. Come hell or high water. I'll see if I can illustrate this with the language of hip hop. I think it's Miguel who said it was designed for us to fail, but we still prevail through the hell. Can you believe it? We're still undefeated. I hope you hear Miguel as he is postulating the profound point that come hell or high water in spite of a design that is diabolical and designed for our disadvantage. Miguel said, it's designed for us to fail, but we still prevail through the hell. Well, Miguel is piggybacking on the brilliance of Langston Hughes, who poetically incarnates a wise mother as she speaks to a son who is going through hell and high water. Check out what this mother says with ungrammatical profundity. Say, well, son, I tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's at tax and its splinters, boards torn up, places with no carpet on the floor, bare, but all the while I've been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you quit now. Don't you sit down on them steps because you find it's kind of hard. I still climbing, I still going, and life for me ain't been no crystal stare both Miguel and this mother from the mind of Langston Hughes. In essence, they're saying to us that in this life, every now and then, we will have to deal with hell and high water. Hell, I park right there parenthetically because hell reminds us of the reality that in this life, hell is not simply an eschatological destination that one may go to if they they die without Christ, but hell can be an existential experience that you are going through even though you know Christ. Yeah, you can catch hell. You can go through hell. You can deal with people who raise hell because they are hell yuns come hell, but not just hell. There is high water. High water speaks of those overwhelming obstacles and that opposition that threatens to drown our dreams come hell or high water is also the title of a wonderful book by that brilliant prophet and professor Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. Dr. Dyson has a book called Come Hell or High
by water. And in that book, what he does is prophetically analyze race through the lens of what went down when Hurricane Katrina battered New Orleans. And because of a broken structure, not just the breaching of the levees, but the broken structure of the body politic of these disunited states of America, according to Michael Eric Dyson, it left black people behind because according to Dyson, Dyson declares, and please don't miss this, that to be black and poor in these disunited states of America is to deal with hell and high water. I'm still not coming through. I'll make this real plain. The year was 2009. The date is June 30th. And there is a flight that is traveling from Paris to the Comoros Island right off of the Comoros Islands, which are right off the southeastern coast of the motherland, Africa, close to the wonderful island of Madagascar. And this flight, my sisters and brothers, had on it a young lady and her mother. Her name is Bahia Bakari. Bahia Bakari and her mother were going to the Comoros. And you'll discover that they come, that their family came from the Comoros Islands, even though they lived in France. But for the very first time, this young lady was traveling back to her native land. And with excited expectation, she boarded that flight. It's now in the wee hours of the morning, local Comoros time. And in the wee hours of the morning, suddenly the plane is trapped and attacked by a turbulence that was treacherous. The, the plane is now shaking and the pilot makes an error that is so costly that before you know it, there in the wee hours of the morning around 1.30 a.m., the plane descends suddenly and it crashes into the waters of the Indian Ocean. And we all know the plane wreckage is now covering. Watch this, the floor is now covering the waters of the Indian Ocean. And my sisters and brothers, Bahia Bakari finds herself now on top of some plane wreckage and she falls asleep. And when she awakens, the sun has risen. Her mother has perished. Everyone else on the flight has perished. It is a plane wreck that has left her heart broken, her spirit wrecked. It is is a plane wreck, my sisters and brothers, and she finds herself on the broken pieces of uh, the plane wreckage. What a terrible situation. Uh, understand on one level, she's got to deal with the trauma of the plane crash. But then on top of that, she's got to deal with the sorrow and grief from losing her mother. It all began. Uh, please don't miss this because in the midst of turbulence, there was leadership, a pilot that could not handle the turbulence and as a consequence that pilot made a mistake and when the pilot made the mistake all on board had to live with or die because of the consequences of the choices made by that leadership and they're surviving even that bad choice in the midst of a turbulent and treacherous uh, a treacherous uh, chop that the plane experienced was this young lady. This young lady is now, watch this, floating on the wreckage of the ship. I park there parenthetically because my sisters and brothers, we have discovered in this nation that leadership matters. If you have bad leadership, they make bad choices when you're in bad turbulence and over 400,000 Americans have perished because of bad leadership that made bad choices. 
voices calling the coronavirus a hoax. And some are listening to me right now. You've known the heartbreak of losing and knowing people who have perished because of the mismanagement of the coronavirus crisis. Not only does leadership matter, but let's keep it a buck. All of us are going to experience turbulence in our journey. That's what the plane hit was hit by. It was hit by turbulence. And then uh, my sisters and brothers note with me that this young lady finds herself now heartbroken. She is grief stricken because her mother perished and her, she is now in pain. I park right there parenthetically because God has me in the Kool-Aid calling out the flavor of someone who's known the pain, the heartbreak of losing a loved one to death and the grief is still grabbing you. You know what it's like to wonder if the pain will ever go away because there is an empty space, not just in your life, but in your heart. There's a hole in your soul because of the grief. That's what young Bahia Bakari experienced, but then I'm not even done. She's floating on wreckage and that leads me to Acts chapter 27 because the book lets us know the gospel globetrotter and trailblazing theologian from Tarsus, that sable skin servant of our savior, the apostle Paul has found himself on a ship that has wrecked. Why did it wreck? It wrecked because of bad leadership that would not listen to the experts. Paul had traveled and traversed that, that area on the Mediterranean often and knew that at the time they were trying to get to Rome. It was the wrong time between October and spring. And Paul had told them, why don't we just stay in fair havens? But the captain would not listen. And because he would not listen, we discover afresh that leadership matters. And the book lets us know they took off and all of a sudden the ship was hit by a treacherous storm. It was what is known as a a perfect storm, Euroclidon. And in, when Euroclidon hit that ship, understand on the screen of your anointed imagination that the wicked winds are causing the waves to toss the ship and to and fro. And now, my sisters and brothers, they have not seen daylight. They have not seen sun, moonlight, nor stars for well over two weeks. Imagine that constant perennial darkness. Have you ever felt like that? What a metaphor that is to be in a dark place. And it seems like the darkness is never going to go away. You feel Martin Luther King Jr. who declared that sometimes life is a long and desolate corridor with no exit signs. That's what they felt like in this miserable and melancholic moment. But hallelujah, the book lets us know Know that God spoke to Paul and told Paul, don't worry, are you, the ship is not going to make it, but y'all are going to make it. And check out what Paul said. Paul gave that testimony to the captain and the centurion. And when Paul did that, Paul said, and I believe God. I got to hang out and give you a moment to shout because it's one thing to believe in God. That's easy. The Bible says the demons in hell. They believe in God, but all they do is tremble. But it's another thing when you believe God. That means when you believe God, you believe God's word is true and will come to pass. You believe God when God says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You believe God when God says bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord. I'll open up the windows of heaven pour you out a blessing and you won't have enough room to receive it. You believe God when God says give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Anybody believe God when God says in this world you shall have tribulation, but be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. Paul says, I believe God. And because he believed God, you see what happens. The 
book lets us know that finally dawn broke and when dawn broke and they could see in the distance an island and they saw a beach and when they beheld the beach they moved in that direction only to hit a sand bank and a treacherous reef that caused the ship to be stuck and the ship is now stuck but wait it gets worse because the book lets us know that in that sand bank there are crashing waves and they are hitting the ship from opposite sides with such savage ferocity that the book lets us know the hind part of the ship began to break can you see it on the screen of your anointed imagination they are stuck and everything is falling apart come hell or high water they are stuck like Chuck and their world is falling apart I gotta park right there parenthetically because someone is listening to me right now and God has me at your address because that's exactly how you feel you feel stuck and everything is falling apart you want to make a move but you can't move and everything is falling apart but watch what the book says the book says that at that moment the one of the soldiers said let's kill them all the centurion said no we ain't killing nobody and the book lets us know here comes your shout and that is that they were told if you can swim swim to shore but the rest of you grab some of the wreckage and the book lets us know some swam but the rest made it safe to shore on planks and the broken pieces of that ship that's my shout because if I'm honest I, I declare that a lot of us made it through 2020 but guess what it was a treacherous storm called 2020 I could call the roll about the fact it began on a high note of hope only to watch as our nation continued to unravel or should I say democracy continued to be dismantled as a president who was guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors was found uh, was acquitted by the Senate in a partisan vote because there were some who were more concerned with power than patriotism shortly thereafter Kobe Bryant and his beautiful daughter and seven others shocked the nation as they perished in a helicopter crash and then uh, a few weeks later it the coronavirus crisis hit this nation and again lives have been lost others have been deathly ill many have been sick and are still living in the painful aftermath of that coronavirus crisis it's been 2020 was a hell of a year and now we're in at the end of the first month of the new year and the word is what are we going to do here's the word if you're still here God's word is you gonna make it come hell or high water why because the good news is there's a blessing in the wreckage. I got to go back to my girl, Bahia Bakari, because I'm sure you're wondering what happened to her. What she did, y'all, she was able to float on the wreckage. She was able to get a blessing from what was broken. She was able to float on that which was broke. I got to keep going, but I'm trying to let somebody know that the fact that you are still here, God says, grab whatever was broken uh, because there is a blessing in the wreckage there is a blessing in what is broken uh, and what is broken is going to keep you in it is going to keep you from going under because you'll be able to float on what broke and that way you won't go under because there's a blessing in the wreckage you better preach for the hands I'm doing the best I can well how does this work watch the text the text says it works what are we going to do in 2021 and what the first thing we're going to do is thank God for here it is blind side blessings no I got to give it to you like this we've got protection on our blind side 
preach, Freddie. I'm about to do that. Protection on your blind side. Do you know why you survived 2020? It's because God protected you on your blind side. Do you know why you are still here? It ain't because you've always made the best decisions. Well, I'll testify in case you're getting a little high and mighty. I'm not here because I've always made the best choices and done the right thing. I'm not here because I ain't been through hell or high water. I'm here because God has been good enough to protect my blind side. What's your blind side? That, that's a metaphor from football. In football, when the quarterback, watch this, gets under center or even is in the shotgun and receives the football, the quarterback, if he's right-handed or if he's left-handed, will go back to pass. Right-handed will go back to pass this way. But watch what happens when the quarterback is this way, is facing this way. That means there's a blind side. That means he cannot see the defensive end or the outside line linebacker that is coming from his blind side. That's why in football, they have the best tackles to protect the quarterback's blind side. And all I'm trying to say, I don't care how big your Bible is, all of us have a blind side. I don't care how long you've been going to church, all of us have a blind side. But isn't it good to know that in this life, God protects our blind side. Y'all miss your shout. I'll see if I can help you. When I was growing up at Third Baptist Church in San Francisco, Pastor Hank, we had an old school preacher. My daddy would always have pray the altar call prayer. His name was Reverend B.H. Harmon. And when Reverend Harmon got up to pray, we all knew two things were going to happen. Number one, he was going to recite the same prayer. And number two, he was going to get happy all by himself. But Reverend Harmon recited that prayer so often, y'all. I came to memorize that prayer. I'm glad I memorized that prayer because in the middle of that old school prayer, Reverend Harmon would thank God. Here it is. Thank you, Jesus, for protecting me from danger seen and unseen. That's blind side protection because whatever else I've discovered, God is so good that God protects us from stuff we see and that God can see what's coming, but also God can see what we can't see. And as a consequence, God will protect, will, will protect us on the blind side. Somebody testified I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but God protected me on my blind side. I got to see if I can make this plain because y'all not shouting yet. I feel you're getting ready to, but watch this. Read the text. The text says that when the ship got stuck in the sand bank and, and the crashing waves from opposite sides were demolishing, destroying the hind part of the ship, the text lets us know. No, this is going to get you right here that one of the soldiers said, let's kill all of these prisoners. They were practicing what the brilliant black feminist Brittany Cooper called a necropolitics. Necropolitics means that I am comfortable with the deaths of others. And that is what happened in this country. We had a, a president, COVID-45, who was comfortable with the death of others. And so as a consequence. He said it is what it is. That's necropolitics. Necropolitics does not see the humanity of those who are hurting and that's what that soldier wanted to do. He wanted to kill each and every one of the prisoners who were on board that ship. But you know what happened? The centurion spoke up and the centurion spoke up and all of this is going on behind the back of Paul. All all of this is going on and they don't even know it. I got to stop right there because God is so good. God will put you in the heart and on the mind and in the mouth of the right people at the right time who will do the right thing when life could have gone dangerously wrong. Yes, my sisters and brothers, God will protect your blind side. God will have your back. God will watch your back. God's God Got you. God protects us on our blind side. But not only that, the text lets us know that beyond God protecting us on our blind side, I love what the text says. The text lets us know we can get
get proceeds from our brokenness. I love it. We can profit from what is broken. That's what the text lets us know because the text says that they made it safe to shore on broken pieces and planks. They made it safe to shore. Here it is. That's what I call creativity in the midst of catastrophe. I'm loving that right there. Creativity in the midst of catastrophe. And that is exactly how you're going to make it in 2021. And that is allow God to bless you with profits from your losses, proceeds from your brokenness. Watch God give you a creativity to make something good even out of the bad that you found yourself going through. That's exactly what we've done as a people. If I can remix Charles Adams right quick, Charles Adams would throw down like this and say, they gave us hell and we created Har uh, Howard. They gave us slavery and we created the spirituals. They gave us brokenness and we created Bishop College. They gave us misery and we created Morgan State and Morehouse College. They made us suffer and we came back with Spellman. They gave us the blues and we put rhythm in front of it and now we have rhythm and blues. They put us in jeopardy and somehow we came out with jazz. They gave us hardship and we produce hip hop because we are a people who've been able to take a crisis and catastrophe and bring creativity out of that bad boy. I'll make it real plain. I love telling the story of going to the funeral of the late great advocate for justice, Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran had passed away, and, the, and, and when he passed away, my sisters and brothers, check out what happened. I happened to be in L.A., and the funeral was held at West Angeles Church of God in Christ. I went to the funeral. Me and Bishop Rudolph McKissick were in town together in L.A. We both go to the funeral, and there at the funeral, I'm blown away because that eighth wonder of the world. Stevie Wonder is gets up to sing and play. And y'all, he sang and played Amazing Grace, O-M to the Jeezy. And when he got in, he kept on playing and singing it. And he got to through many dangers, toils, and snares, not a dry eye in the building. And when he went on to that last verse, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright signing as the sun, we no less day to sing God's praise than when we first begun. I was done. I was messed up. And then, y'all, I had to get up and go to the bathroom. So I got up to go to the restroom. And there in the hallway, Bishop Charles Blake, the pastor of West A, is escorting Stevie Wonder to his office. I'm tripping because there is Stevie and the bishop. Bishop Blake recognizes me. I had done the revival there the year before at West A. And when Bishop saw me, he said, have you ever met Stevie Wonder? I said, no, sir, I'd love to. He then introduced me to Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder then, after meeting me, said, it's good to see you. Y'all missed it right there. Stevie Wonder said, it's good to see you. What do you say when Stevie Wonder says, it's good to see you? But after we engaged in pleasantries and after, after all of that, guess what happened? Stevie said, Bishop, he turns to the bishop and says, Bishop, somebody needs to fix the piano because there are some broken keys on the piano. And he listed right there the keys that were broken. And do you know Bishop Blake then said, but Stevie, the way you played it, we couldn't tell it was broken. I had to chime in and say, amen. You played it like, it was, like you were in a fine concert hall with the greatest fine-tuned piano of all time. He said, well, it's because I played around the broken keys and made music out of what was left over. There it is. I'm trying to let somebody know when you know God for yourself. Yes, it does not mean the piano keys will not be broken, but it means that God will give you the resilience, the determination, and the creativity to make music out of what you have left over. That's what you're going to do in 2021. You're going to make music out of what you
you have left over. Is that not what Barry Gordy did? Barry Gordy had, was trying to get a, mu a record store running, and the record store failed miserably. Can you see his broken piano right there? Because his dream is broken. What happens to a dream deferred from river to river, uptown and down? There's liable to be confusion when your dreams get kicked around. But y'all know what happened. Barry then goes to work for General Motors and there on the assembly line, he learns something about how to organize and he takes that and forms Motown and Motown becomes an assembly line putting out great music from Martha Reeves and the Vandellas to Stevie Wonder, the Jackson Five, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, the Temptations, the Four Tops, Call the Roll. It's because he made music out of what he had left over. Y'all didn't like Barry Gordy. Let me give you another one. Stacey A. A. Abrams in 2018, she lost. No, the election was stolen from her. But God had something bigger in mind. God said, you may not win this election for the governor of the state, but you're going to win the nation of the, you're going to win the United States. Here's the shout right here. Because she did not win that, she went to plotting and planning. And the next thing you know, we not only have Georgia as a state that turned colors from red to blue, but we also have the pastor of the Ebenezer Baptist Church, Raphael Warnock, pastor of the church that birthed Martin Luther King Jr. Raphael Warnock is now Senator Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock. Yes, I'm trying to let you know she may not have won the state, but she ended up winning the nation because God says you can make music out of what you have left over. I got to quit. I've held y'all too long in the final analysis. Watch the text. It makes me shout because the text says God's promises will come true in spite of what you are going through. I love it because don't forget, I told y'all, the Bible tells us that God had spoken to Paul in a vision at night and an angel said, Paul, you're going to survive. You're going to make it. Now, the ship ain't going to make it, but y'all are going to make it. Not one life is going to be lost. That's a promise from the God above that said, I'm going to get you through what you're going through down here. And yes, my sisters and brothers, that's all I'm trying to give y'all. I'm trying to give y'all the promises of Almighty God because God's promises are true, are faithful and true. God's promises will see you through. God's promises, all things work together for good to those that love God. God and are called according to God's promises, God, are called according to God's purpose. That's a promise you can count on. I, I'm not even done. You want another promise? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That's a promise you can count on. I, I got to give y'all another promise. My pro God's promise is cast your cares upon God because God cares for you. You need another promise. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. Young folks shall fall, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary, walk and not faint. Y'all need another promise. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, because they will soon be cut down and wither like the green grass. Y'all need another promise. Here's your promise. The promise is that God is faithful. God is will take care of you. God will watch over you. God will do it. So go ahead and believe God and believe God's promise. I guess I'll close like this. Pastor Davis, I'm sure you recall this. I believe it was last year when I was there and, and our beloved friend and, and, and brother, Pastor John Jenkins, he, he came to the revival. And when he came to the revival afterwards, we, we were fellowshipping and dining on good food. And, and of course, I'm fascinated by the fact that John Jenkins is not only a pastor, preacher, teacher, he's also 
watch this, a pilot. And so as a consequence, I had to ask him questions. And I even told him that I had used as an illustration when John F. Kennedy Jr. and his beloved wife, Carolyn Bissett, they, they perish and they perish because he experienced spatial disorientation, spatial disorientation, which means he didn't know which way was up, spatial disorientation, which which means that he was discombobulated. His equilibrium was thrown off and he made a decision in the midst of spatial disorientation and the plane crashed up north. And when the plane crashed, he and his wife perished. I, I asked Pastor John Jenkins about that. You know what Jenkins told us? He told us this, Pastor Davis. He said that John Kennedy and his wife would have been Spared, they would have made it if he had just known because he does not know how to fly without the instruments or with just the instruments. But what he did not know is that there was a button just above him and the button, if he had just pushed that button, flipped that switch, everything would have turned out all right. It was a button, a switch. It was all he had to do was flip that thing and everything, the plane would have righted itself. The plane would have been all right. All he had to do was hit that button and y'all are trying to figure out what that button is. That button is basically, here it is, a, a turn up button. No, that's not the word. Uh, what's the word for that button? The button, watch this, is, is not just a turn up button. Uh, it's, 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 it's a button that basically says, I'm about to write this situation myself. I'm going to hit that button. And once I hit that button, that that button is going to do exactly what needs to be done to keep us safe and have us go to a higher altitude until we get right. And that's all I'm trying to let everybody know. And that is, it's time to turn up in 2021. Let's turn up in 2021 because when we turn up in 2021, we'll basically testify. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Yes, it's time to turn up in 2021 because the Bible puts it like this. Here it is. It's your theme scripture. I've been trying to get to the whole sermon and that is I'm forgetting those things which are behind me and pressing toward the mark of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Why? Because it's time to turn up in 2021. 2021. Do I have some turn up saints who are tuned in right now? Well, turn on up. Forget what's behind you. Move forward to what God has in front of you. It's time for all of us to turn up in Jesus' name. Let's go to God in prayer. God, how we thank you. How we praise you. How we love you. How we adore you. You're such a good God. You're such a faithful God. You watch over us when we can't even watch over ourselves. And God, you've done that in 2020. And now that we're in 2021, we need you. Oh, we need you. Every hour we need you. So bless us now, our Savior. We come to thee. Help us in Jesus' name. Not just to turn up but to remember that that button calls on us to level up. There it is, level up. <laughs> We're going to level up in 2021. Level up and do what we've never done before. Level up and have the courage to overcome our fears. Step out of the box. Do the unthinkable. Do the unimaginable. Level up. Level up. And when we level up, we will watch you do what you can when we can't. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. That's that button. It's a level up button. Level up. Level up. I guess I'll close like this. Let, let me just do this right quick, Hank, because when I was growing up, we had a song. I'm looking for a miracle. I'm expecting the impossible. And then they went on to say, just believe and receive it. 
God will perform it today. Hey, hey, just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. Go ahead and level up. Come hell or high water. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's give it up for Dr. Freddie Haynes. What a word. I know, I know you want to, I know you want to give an additional gift after that. And if you just tuned in, I know you want to give a gift. Dr. Haynes, thank you so very much. What a word we have heard. Oh my God. If there's ever a preaching machine, it's Freddie Haynes. I mean, he's there. He, you see how you see how he did that? Freddie, that, that's just that's you, you ought you ought to be whipped for that. I mean, it just I mean, just to preach like that on a Saturday night, I mean, when we thank God, he has blessed us in a marvelous way. And now he, all he has to do is, is drive home to his home right there in Dallas. You don't have to shovel any snow. We got snow coming here, Freddie. They, they, God bless you. <laughs> it's 75 degrees here. Listen, see, you making us feel real bad. You make us feel real bad. Cause we don't, it's not 75 it's it's about it's about 29 and so it's it's you know that's what we're dealing with but thank you dr hayes man go on home have a great night but if you're listening if you're watching and you're worshiping tonight you want to make a decision for jesus we extend the invitation to you follow christ make jesus your choice the best life is the blessed life and Put Jesus at, Jesus at the center of your life and the rest of your life can be the very best of your life. We extend the invitation right now. My brother, my sister, you want to come a candidate for baptism, Christian experience. You were drifted away, but you want to come back. Come on right now. Come on right now. We'd love to have you in our family. In our family. Come on, Nate. Give us a... Give us a oh, I know somehow Jesus. And I know some way we're gonna make it that's right we're gonna make it come hell or high water that's right that's right oh, no matter what's the test no matter no matter no matter what comes our way we're gonna make it yes we are yes we are yes we are Revival 2021. What a revival. With Jesus on our side. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, things will work out fine. Oh, 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 oh. we're gonna make it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No matter what you're going through. Come on, come on. We're gonna make it No matter what you face, church You wanna declare We're gonna make it We're gonna make it Come hell or high water, we're gonna yeah. make it One more time We're gonna make it Come on, let's clap those hands together In the joy of the Lord The few of us who are here, you can go to your seats momentarily and again, give a big shout out to Tanya Hutton and Mark Hicks who united with our church this week and we welcome them into our family. We do want you to know that our feeding on Saturdays is now going from 9.30 to 11.30. Volunteers can arrive between 8 and 8.30. And again, uh, we want you to keep involved in, that in, the, in the morning. Uh, our Sunday Biblical Institute lesson at 9.30 is going to be led by Dr. Yvonne Felton. Our divorce care uh, is also taking place now through April the 11th. Uh, make sure that you are connecting with that. Uh, in our 1045 service tomorrow, we will install our officers uh, virtually. You do not have to come. You do not have to be in the place. We have sent to all of our officers in your email a litany which we will share and internalize and we will pray for you as we go forward in uh, this new year. Uh, on Monday night, we help persons with jobs, our Elevation Employment Ministry, keys to virtual success, how to maximize your interview and employment 
from home. We have power fit classes and we're going to get some, we're going to do some power fit and face strong tonight in just a moment. Uh, every Monday and Friday at, at 645 Facebook Live. I've caught them and caught Dick and Lene Elliott and Tammy and others leading. And so we are going to make sure that we keep us fit. And, and tonight we're doing it so you be ready for snow shoveling tomorrow. Amen. You, because folk die during snow storms. And you know, they go out and begin. So we want you don't want to make we want to make sure you're ready. Uh, and again, and even just because you exercise tonight does not mean you're ready to shovel in the morning. Amen. And this is the first exercise you've been doing. Our, our grief share is on Thursdays uh, at seven. Our men's prayer call uh, on on Thursdays at 12 o'clock noon. Thank you again for being a part of the worship experience. Thank our band. Oh yeah. Teddy, everybody, thank you, Brother Nate. You figured that thing out in, in, in just a marvelous way. And we give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Again, if you're tuned in late, but you want to give, we, pop, we, we put that on the screen, pop it up for you, let you know that we'd love to have you to share. And even if you gave early, but you want to give an additional gift, because Dr. Haynes, I mean, woo-wee. He did some preaching, he did some preaching, he did some preaching. And you can see Dr. Freddie Haynes, he don't need a crowd to preach, amen. He, he can just preach in the spirit. And so we thank God that for all of the folk who are out there, make sure you share it in your various forms, play it back, and you got it, you got it, and let's run with it. And uh, you better run and tell that. So we're going to send you out uh, with a blessing. And again, we're going to get ready to get our exercise on. Come on, come on, Deacon Lene. Uh, make, start making your way. And we pray benediction, but we're going to give you some help, healthy ways to close out the night in terms of exercise. This is going to help you with that late night snack. And those getting ready to watch the uh, uh, the Lakers and the Boston Celtics and whatever it is you're doing tonight. Amen. Uh, Deacon Lene is going to help us. Now, dear God, bless us. As we get ready to leave this place with never your presence, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. And Lene is getting ready to come and uh, lead us. And uh, y'all get on out those aisles. Let's stretch out. All stretch right. out, Lene. Whatever you want me to do. I don't know if you want to move something. I can I would move like it. To move for we you can to do that. To That's side. easy. That would be awesome. Good evening. Good evening. Hello there. You're going to come out into the aisles. We have enough room. <laughs> come out to the aisles so we can get our move on. And, any, and anyone shoveling snow tomorrow, make sure you warm up, please, first, before you start shoveling. Warm up first. All right. I think we're ready. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, baby. <laughs> All right. I think we're ready. Everybody ready? Okay. Looks good. You, everyone at home, get up. <laughs> All right. Let's march. That's it. We're going to walk to the right. One, two, three. Tap. One, two, three. And push. Right, left. Walk to the right. One, two, three. Tap. One, two, three. Tap, push, right, left. That's it. Walk to the right. One, two, three. Tap, push, right, left. Right, left. Now we're gonna do single heel. Four, three, two, one. Tap, step. Four, three, two, one. Step. That's it. Four, three, two, one. Step. That's it. Four. Two, one. Keep going. Four, three, two, one. Heel. Four, three, two, one. Now walk it. Walk. Tap from the top. Push. It's a level change. Walk. Tap. Tap. Push. That's it. Walk it. One, two, three, tap. Push. Right. Left. Right. Walk it. One, two, three, tap. Push it. Woo! Let's do some heels. Single. Four, three, two, one, step. That's it. Four, three, two, one. Yeah. Four, three, two, one. 
let's push it. God is enough for us. I'm not giving up. Push. Woo. That's it. Walk it. Tap. Push. Level change. Working those quads. Warming those quads up. Down, up, down. That's it. Keep going. Tap. Yeah. Push. Push some heels. Four, three. Warm up. Y'all ready? All right. This is all cardio. All right. These are going to be some leg lifts and some wide marches. All right. A little faster. All right. Now we're going to do leg lifts to the outside and leg lifts to the back. And I'll cue you. Here we go. Our leg lift. Eight. Seven. Heart rate up. 
when we stop by to tell you that what's in front of you is bigger than what's behind you. Now, your destiny, your promise, your future. You might as well shout before you get it. Because God's a dog from the king. Okay, here we go. Okay, sing and slay. Go down. That is my season. Oblique. Right here. You ought to declare that over your own life. Say, I believe. That's it. Stand tall. That it's my time. Crunch. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor. All right. That's all of you who joined us. Again, thank God. That was a good one. And thank you, Deacon Lene Elliott, for blessing us. And what a worship we have had tonight, come hell or high water. Wow. Have a great night. Enjoy it. It's 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Get on to your next thing. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to have a late night snack. Y'all know how I do Chick-fil-A on Saturday night. Amen. So we, we can ready to roll with that. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>